Hey there, it's Ben Housel here, and I'm super excited for this tutorial review. We're gonna be having a look at the Ripple Tools Complete version two plugin pack for Final Cut Pro 10. Now we're gonna be having a look at some of the tracking tools that you have for things like color correction, um, and also having a good overview of some of the other tools that are available in this plugin pack for Final Cut Pro 10. Now, if you like these types of tutorial reviews and Final Cut Pro 10 tutorials that really focus on the editing and plugin packs that you can get for Final Cut Pro 10, then please do hit the subscribe button and the notifications button, and you'll get a little update every time I post a new video. Um, but basically, without further ado, we're gonna dive in and have a look at the Ripple Tools Complete 2 plugin pack for Final Cut Pro 10. So we're gonna be looking at four different things here in the Ripple Tools Complete plugin pack. The first is the variable blur, where we can actually track an object and then blur out either the object or areas outside of the object. Then we're gonna have a look at how we do a tracked color correction. So in this particular example, we're kind of highlighting this truck um, and then color correcting the rest. We'll have a look at the, the split screen options. Um, and we'll also talk about when we're working with the Ripple Tools Complete plugin, some of the tips that you want for working with any plugins in Final Cut Pro 10. And then we're gonna look at how we use the vertical video plugin if you've taken videos on your iPhone or smartphone um, and you need to work with the background to actually get that video to fit into a 16.9 format. Now with all these examples, we're really just touching the tip of the iceberg um, with the Ripple Tools Complete plugin packs. There's a lot of really useful tools inside there. So if we jump into our titles and generators sidebar, you can see if we stretch out the, the Ripple Tools Complete here, we have a whole variety of different helpers and plugins um, that we can use um, with our videos. So we have things like guides, um, if you want to align objects and line text, and we have a leveler for leveling out video. And we also have things like our trackable color correction and our trackable tritone effect, which we can use to kind of highlight different parts of our image. So as we scroll down here, we'll see some of the text effects and that type of thing that we can uh, track and work with, as well as some of the transformers for creating things like split screens or reflections in your video edits. So let's dive in and have a look at the examples we're gonna work through here. So we've got a timeline set up here with four videos, um, two of the same, we're gonna use the same video twice and then um, also this vertical video that we'll use to have a look at how the vertical video uh, works. So for this first video on our timeline, we're gonna use the variable blur, which is trackable as well. So we're gonna drag this down here and we'll just stretch this out to fill that clip that we have there. So with this variable blur layer selected, the first thing we're gonna go ahead and do is actually track the object um, that we want to blur. So what I found when working with this is that it's a good idea to kind of zoom in on an object that you can kind of track in as smaller area as possible. That will make the tracking a bit quicker. And so we're gonna select the, the front of this truck. Now we need to come back to the beginning of the video and we'll grab this section of the truck here. And you can see up in our inspector on the right, um, we have some options for the, the tracking. So the first thing we're gonna do is track the object. So we'll set up our tracker, just kind of resize it. We're gonna track the front of this truck here and come back to the beginning of your clip and then we'll let the, the tracking track forward. So we'll just let that finish up. So depending on the speed of your computer, the tracking will vary in the amount of time it takes. So now if we kind of scrub through our video, we can see the tracking here is following the front of that truck quite nicely. So if we come back to the beginning of our variable blur, we'll select that. So before I do this, I'm just gonna turn off my object tracker and that will mean I can move the on-screen controller for the blur and we're gonna position the blur somewhere around the middle of this truck and we can modify the inner and outer radius. So you can see by having the inner radius smaller than my outer radius, what's in the middle is gonna be in focus. And then by having my inner radius bigger than my outer radius, we're gonna be blurring an object out. So this might be a face or a vehicle or something else that's moving in your video that you want to blur out. So in this case, we are gonna make the outer radius bigger. So if we play that through, you can see we've got that nice kind of sharp focus in the middle of the video, and then the edges are blurred out, kind of applying a focus to that part of the video. So let's move on and have a look at the next option we've got here. So we're gonna come to some of our color options up here and we're gonna be using the tritone trackable object. So if I drag this down above this second clip, so I'll just disable this for a moment. So we're gonna be tracking this red truck that we see on the right-hand side there. And basically, 
Once we've done that, um, we will then keep the color of the truck and make the background black and white. So if we bring our tracker down to the truck here, and I'm gonna just make this a bit smaller so it just matches the, the back of the truck. So we're looking for an air of the image that we can see pretty much throughout the entirety of that uh, six seconds. So if we come back to the beginning now and use the object tracker here, so we'll track forward. And again, depending on the speed of your computer, the track will happen more quickly or more slowly. So once my tracking has finished, I'm gonna enable the mask, which is gonna bring up the, the kind of color correction um, here. So basically this tritone highlights, midtones, and shadows. And now if I turn off my object tracker, so we can often only have one on-screen controller available at a time. So we need to turn off the object tracker when we want to move um, this with this handle. So I'm basically going to position this, and I'm right at the beginning of my clip here, around my truck. So I'm going to change the mask size. We've got some options here for changing the height and the width uh, differently. So we can kind of get this just how we want it. We can also round off the edges of this as well. And we can also invert the mask. So this is where we can keep the color of the truck and we can change the color of everything else in the background. So if we come to the midtones here, you can see I can pick any kind of tint that I want, or if I move to more of a white or a gray, then we're really gonna kind of desaturate uh, that image in the background. So I'm gonna select a lighter gray and I'm gonna select a lighter gray for the, the blacks as well. So we kind of push this background back. And now you can see when I play this through, my truck is moving and my square is moving as well. Now, there's a bit of a weird thing here. The square stays the same size and the truck gets smaller. And also the offset of that changes a little bit. So basically we are still tracking the truck but we need to kind of play with this and add a couple of keyframes things too. So if I come to this point in time, at the beginning, I'm gonna add a keyframe for my mask size and a keyframe for my mask position. And really we're only gonna to need to add maybe two or three keyframes here. But if I come to the end here of this particular clip, I'm gonna move my mask position. So you can see it's added a second keyframe there between this point and this point, which is keeping it centered on the back of that truck. And then if I drop down the mask size, and we'll actually modify and add a keyframe for the roundness in a second as well, then as the truck moves away, that rectangle will get smaller as well. So I'm gonna to come to the end here, we'll drop this down a little bit more. And then I'm gonna use my arrows here to navigate between the keyframes. So back to the beginning, I'm going to add a keyframe for the mask roundness. And then at the end, I'm going to drop down the mask roundness as well. So we still keep that rectangle at the end and we'll drop down the size a little bit more as well. So if we keep going, we might just want to add one more keyframe somewhere in the middle here, just for the mask size, position and roundness just so that we kind of stay right on that truck so we're getting a nice track there now but then also by controlling the keyframes of those other elements we're able to keep it more in keeping with the, the overall video so that's the tritone trackable option you can see how the track is working how the colors are working as well and how we can desaturate something uh, in there and now we'll come to our split screen. So this one is super easy. So there's a couple of different things to consider in here. Some of it is for the split screen within the Ripple Tools Complete Pack. And some of it is just basic uh, useful knowledge for when you're working with generators, titles, or plugins in Final Cut Pro 10. So we'll scroll down to the transformers. We'll drop the split screen over the top there, trim it down. And so for this, we have a drop zone. So when you have a drop zone, in your generator, we can drag a clip. So we'll use this truck clip. So we'll, we can select our drop zone and then drag the truck clip across. Now, 
I prefer not to do this uh, this way. Um, and the reason for that is that if I actually come to my drop zone and click once on the drop zone, then I can control much better where my start frame is for the clip inside that drop zone by hovering over my clip in the browser here. So if I click here, then that's the frame that my uh, drop zone is basically going to start on. So if I apply that clip, then you can see the truck when that animates on is up at the top left and then rolling around to the right. Now we've lost the truck there, which we definitely don't want to do. Um, but in the split screen here, we have an offset. So we have a source uh, position offset, which is for the video in the bottom. So we can relocate that. And then we also have the drop zone pan as well, which means that we can move where the drop zone is as well. And so now if we come back to the beginning, we'll just let this render out. And now once it's rendered, if we play it through, you can see we get that little bit of animation at the beginning. And then our split screen is created. So we have some other options that are useful uh, for the split screen as well. So we have the option to have a bar in the middle or to not have a bar in the middle. We can change the color of that bar. So we can have a different colored bar um, in the middle. And we can also blur the bar in the middle as well if we want to. We can also scale the video in the drop zone and change the source location. So the source can be on the left, on the right, um, the top, or the bottom. We'll leave the source on the right for the moment. That's how we've got it set up. So that's the split screen, which is a really handy feature of the Ripple Tools Complete plugin. So now we'll come to the last video uh, and just kind of fix this vertical video. So if you're creating any video in 16.9, but you have a vertical video um, and you want to blur out the background or manage the background in some way, then this title plugin will be really useful. So we're gonna scroll back up and we're looking for the vertical video option here. So the helpers. And so if we drag this down over our clip, then basically you can see it creates a blurred out version of your original video um, but as the vertical video. So you can see here, we've got some different options um, up here as well. So we've got background color, background position, and also background tint. So we can modify the tint of the background. If we have some branding colors or anything else we wanna use, we can modify the intensity. And then also we can increase or decrease the, the foreground scale as well. We also have a drop zone uh, down here as well. So we've got options for the background type. So we can have a video as our background type, a solid color, um, which is our background color here. Uh, we can change that to any color we want. And then we also have the drop zone option whereby we can select our drop zone and choose a different video um, that will be in our background. So now you can see we have a different video um, playing back in the background. So we've got some options for the background blur, the background scale, and a variety of different kind of other options that we can use as we're dropping a vertical video into a 69 video or a video with a different aspect ratio. So that's a quick overview of a few of the very cool tools in the Ripple Tools Complete plugin pack. It's definitely a plugin pack I'd recommend. Um, it's gonna be a great time saver if you're doing any of these techniques. And it would be possible to make some of these plugins, for instance, for the vertical video, um, relatively easily in something like Apple Motion. But then the motion tracking and things like the split screen are gonna be a lot more hard to create. So I definitely recommend uh, taking a look at this plugin. There's some text tracking and stuff like that, which we haven't had a look at. Take a look at the specs by following the link below. Um, and if you do have any questions about this plugin, about any of the tutorials I've been creating in Final Cut Pro 10, then please do leave a comment below, leave a thumbs up, and I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.